Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Narycast. I am your host, Josh. And this um, uh, week, we're almost at 500 subscribers. So I'm going to first off say, uh, hit, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button to help us hit that huge milestone. Uh, it's been like three months since we started this thing, maybe four now, but it's wild. We're, so it's growing quick, and uh, we're appreciative appreciative of all of you that have already subscribed. Um, we also have our, our uh, Patreon set up, too, so you guys can actually support the channel. Um, we have decided that we're going to put me through some crazy challenges. So for you guys that are supporters, you guys get to see uh, some of that stuff. Um, but check it out in the link in the bio, and I'll also include the link in the description below. Um, but yeah, but I'm going to introduce our guest today. Um, he's been a great mentor of mine since I've started this job as the development director in fundraising because um, he does the exact same job in the same diocese at a different university. So this is Brett Aiken, who is the development director at St. John's in uh, Oklahoma, at Oklahoma State University, which is my alma mater. So how are you doing, Brett? Josh, I want to say thanks for having me on here, man. I'm stoked yeah. that you thought of me to be a guest. And you yeah. talked about me as a mentor, but I look at it as iron sharpens iron. One person sharpens another. Mm -hmm. And you've been a great resource for me to check your ideas and pick your brain mm -hmm. on things. And so I'm grateful for that friendship. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm doing well. St. John is doing really well. We're getting yeah. ready for back to school stuff, as you yeah. guys know at TU. And yeah. we're about to kick off another school year, so keep us in prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And life is going good. I'm keeping yeah. Father Carry on in line, which is a full-time <laughs> job itself. Is, yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, someone, someone told me the other day, it's like, you know those coaches – that their sole job is to just stand behind <laughs> the, the the head coach, make sure he doesn't go on the field. As someone said, Father Carey needs somebody like that. <laughs> just like, hey. Father Carey, you, need, you have a meeting. Come on, you, you got to go. <laughs> yeah, we, we truly need a full-time person just to kind of make sure he keeps in line. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. It's always in such a great way, though. Um, like, yeah, it's not like in a bad way. It reminds me of uh, Ignacio we were talking about before this, our team lead. He was in charge of Father Mike Schmidt at Seek one time. and. Wow. He told, he told us this story. It was just super cool and to kind of make it short. He basically said, obviously, it's Seek. Everybody's like, oh, my gosh, Father Mike Smith, like, can I take a picture? Can I talk to you? And wants to talk to him. And he is in charge of getting him to the stage. And he's just like, oh, my gosh. So he finally grabs him and says, hey, Father, we have to get to the stage. Like, we've got five minutes before you're supposed to start. And right. uh, and if you know those hallways of Seek, it's going to, even if no one's talking to you, it's hard to get through those. So right. they uh, are walking. And all of a sudden, he feels like, his arm leave his hand and he looks over and he's like, Oh, great. He's heading off again. And he's just like, like, I cannot get this man to the stage, but he realized he's parting the sea. And he went to these three <laughs> girls that were all standing there in university of Minnesota Duluth shirts. And they were freshmen of his at his university right. that were at seek for the first time. And he saw them and they're all kind of standing there. And he's like, it doesn't matter if I'm late, I'm going to go make sure that they're good. And like that they're, they're having a good time. And, and I'm going to check on them. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. So it's like, sometimes it's like, yeah, tough to keep a priest in line, but it's usually for the best reasons possible. No doubt. Yeah. yeah no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I thought I always start with like kind of a little bit about you, um, which honestly, some of this might be new for me, like going back of like where you grew up and right. kind of growing up, whether you're like cradle Catholic or, or converted and then just kind of, you know, about your wife, whatever you want to. I always say, yeah. tell people, take your time because we've got plenty of time. Yeah, so, Josh, I grew up in a town called Hartsarn, Oklahoma, which on a map is about two hours southeast of Tulsa. Okay. And I grew up a cradle Catholic and went kind of went through the motions with my faith as a kid. And the parish I went to was only about 30 to 40 people in the church on mm -hmm. Sunday. And so I remember it was just kind of one of those places where there wasn't a lot of ways to get involved as a kid. We did have CCD classes, but there wasn't a whole lot of ministry outside of that. Mm -hmm. And so graduated high school and played two years of college baseball at a junior college, which is right down the road in Wilburton called okay. Eastern Oklahoma State College. Mm -hmm. And main thing I liked it there was I was close to home. I could see mom and dad and get a home cooked meal here and there <laughs> yeah. and played two years there and then decided to transfer to Southeastern Oklahoma State in Durant, cool. Oklahoma Durant. Mm -hmm. and played two more years there. And I felt like my whole time, like baseball was kind of my identity. I tell this, this true story is baseball was almost like my God, my religion. Mm -hmm. And so I would go to mass on Sunday, but that was basically it. There was no deeper mm -hmm. interior life. There was no prayer life. There was even no friend community that shared the faith. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't until I actually went to grad school at the University of Oklahoma and haven't completed it, started it and kind of met the girl and then mm -hmm. got married. But was introduced to St. Thomas More and mm -hmm. met some of their focused missionaries, uh, met their priest who was wonderful and started to witness kind of what a true faith community was. Mm -hmm. And 
and I realized, man, I would have gave up my four years of baseball to be a part of something like this and to be a part of a Bible study and to go to daily adoration and to go to daily mass because I felt like there was truly something that was missing from my life for the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went through that mode of I was on fire for my faith, zealous and kind of a reversion, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then I met the girl who's now my wife, Taylor Aikens, who was working for Father Carey at St. <laughs> John. And I met Father Carey for the first time, and I didn't quite know what to think about this guy because he was almost like an Energizer bunny that had two <laughs> Red Bulls and yeah. was already introducing me to people, having me do things. And I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I just met you. But anyways, I got married to Taylor, my wife, in 2020, and I previously was working for an insurance company, traveling all over the state, doing all kinds of stuff, and then realized, mm -hmm. like, man, this job is, is draining me. Mm -hmm. Like, spiritually, mentally, I wasn't able to be as present with her. And then we had a baby in 2022, and that's when I realized, like, I got to find something else. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I was praying and praying and going the spiritual direction and our former St. John Development Director, who did an excellent job here, actually took an executive director job in Edmond. Mm -hmm. And I didn't ever think I would work at St. John Catholic Student Center. <laughs> but I was actually golfing with Father Carey, and he said, hey, I want you to apply for this job. And I thought, well, like, I don't know if that's for me. And he's like, no, I want you to put your name in the hat and just let the Lord work. And so I talked with Taylor, prayed about it, and I've been blessed to be here for the last two years, going on three now. And it has changed my life in so many ways and, mm -hmm. and made me a better man, but also allowed me to find the purpose in my life and hopefully be a witness for college students at St. John and vice versa. They're a witness for me to grow in my faith to mm -hmm. see how holy they are and how devout they are. Yeah. The same stuff you're experiencing at St. Philip Neri in Tulsa. Yeah. And yeah, it's a place that it's, it's been so fruitful that I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah. Now, if the Lord calls me something else one day, yeah, I'll have to pray about it and discern it. But it's been such a great place, mm -hmm. and it's really kind of helped me grow my identity and my faith. And so now I have two kids under two, and, yeah, living mm -hmm. in the midst and the trials and the errors of trying to figure yeah. out how to be a parent, trying to figure out how to fundraise, <laughs> and uh, trying to serve the Lord in the best way I can. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's awesome. There, there's so much similarities in our stories because – my wife also introduced me, his girlfriend at the time, but introduced me to Father Elkin and Father right. Webb was was there at the same time at Christ the King. And um, Father Webb did the same thing later on in life. Like Father Kerry married us. So I guess first starting with that story is, yes, he is he is quite the the character and he is not shy at all. And he is like the Energizer Bunny on Red Bull is like a very generous way of putting it because <laughs> yeah. I met him at an Edmund coffee shop with Lindsay. And we walked in. He was like, oh, hey, guys, I'm over here. Like, I got two seats. We got a, a table over here. And we were just like, I was like, oh, my gosh. And Lindsay has walked up. I'm just like, Father, like, you got, it's a coffee shop. Like, calm down. And he's like, no, 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 no. No one cares. Like, look, this guy, he's not even doing anything. This girl's got headphones in. Can you hear me? Can you see? She can't even hear me. And, yeah, no one's paying attention. And we were just, I was like, wow. And then, then he literally was like, I'm Father Carey. And, like, introduced himself. And I was like. That's, this is the wildest person I've ever met. Um, but yeah, but I kind of have the same story too with Father Webb uh, when he was the pastor here is he right. could just actually called Father Carey and was like, because I think you started just shortly before I started here, yeah. right? Yeah, because yeah. he, he called Father Carey and asked him, um, and Father Carey hired the development director before me for this place. And well, it's just like, I don't know really how to hire for this position, uh, Father Webb. Did. And he said, I just don't, I don't know what to look for. Um, and what, like, Cause if you're going to look for someone with fundraising experience, you're not right. going to, that's going to be a very small pool. And so, yeah, I just, they kind of talked and they kind of described how they, how he kind of thought of you and like, like your background um, and stuff like that. And like, look for someone like that. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, father Carey's like, you may go ask Josh Funderburg if he wants to do it. And so it was like, Oh, and so he came and I owned my own business at the time. And right. he was like, would you be interested in doing this? And I didn't even know what it was. Um, and then he said fundraising and I was like, I mean, it could be fun, like going to events and like stuff. I don't know, but I don't know anything about it. And yeah, I interviewed for it and got it. They liked my small business expertise and just my creative entrepreneur like mind. And, right. and I too was just being drained. Like the business right. was doing well, but it took everything. Right. And, uh, and I actually did both for eight months. So eight months I worked full time at St. Philip and was, 
um, dual full-time the, the business too. And I was like, I got to do something about this and take me away from my wife and kids. And so I right. finally sold it this past October. So we'd be coming up on a year soon and it's been great. Yeah. I remember awesome. uh, Father Kerry. So this is before I knew you, but he mm -hmm. was telling me your background and he was telling me like, this guy's no sales. He's a business owner. He's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me all these things. I'm like, why haven't you guys hired him yet? Like, what are you waiting, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you waiting for? Because that yeah. translates perfect. And you're a holy dude in general, which is a great mission, a great fit for the mission. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're right. Like they, you know, mm -hmm. development, I feel like we kind of walked into it or God led us into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I never thought this is what I would do. And I'm sure you would say the same a no. thousand times. Yeah, especially because it's hilarious. Well, I meet people and I don't know if you get this as, uh, as much, but like I, I'll like walk around campus or meet, meet a parent or something like, oh, remind me, like, are you a, a missionary? Right. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm a development director. I work there full time as well. And so yeah. it's so funny. Like, yeah, people just like, like, how'd you get into this? Like, what'd you go to school for? Uh, music performance. Like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. wild. Uh, yeah, God sent me down a wild path. And it's kind of cool to reflect back on and be like, why did he send me music performance? Or like, why? And uh, granted, some of it could have been me not listening and, and doing my own will. But but he would still bring something out of it. And so right. experience of performing gave me great experience to speak on stage. And so when I got into my business, I got to go speak on stage all across the, the, the state and the region. And, and so I got that experience. And, and so talking with people is not a problem at all. And, right. and then small business experience, we went through that whole process, which was just crazy process, but that really gave me a good, like creative mindset, but also, it really, I, I think, gave me appreciation for money because like, I was, yeah. I, mean, I was spending between bills, between the house and our place, and we were spending twelve, fifteen thousand dollars a month. So you right. like, really had to know how to budget and know no how doubt. to like figure this all out. And it was, and I didn't know how to do it. So I was just like, we're kind of learning this on the fly. And yeah. then I got hired to be a development director. I'm like, I'm also learning this on the fly. And so Thank it's you. been, been pretty crazy. So what, what was your first go to when you got hired? Did they have a good like onboarding and training process, or was yeah. it just kind of like Hey, we're going to figure this out together. It was, it was almost like, here's a login to an email and here's a cell phone that you're going to have. And then the rest was just kind of figure it out. And, oh, okay. you know, not knocking the people before me, but it was almost like, you know, they did it this way, but mm -hmm. you do it, whatever you think's best. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took those principles that I used in the sales world as mm -hmm. far as getting in front of people yeah, and then added the spirituality of it is making sure my prayer life is rooted there. Yeah. And I realized like there's so much listening that you don't realize in the development world. I, yeah. I'll go to visits and if I'm talking more than the donor, then I'm probably doing something wrong. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And so there's so many things that, you know, is much different than the sales world. And it's not a transaction, as you know, it's, yeah. it's a transformation, mm -hmm. but yeah, I felt like I was kind of thrown to the wolves and, and father Kerry was a great resource, but he basically said, Hey, I want you to do, go figure it out and you're going to make mistakes, but mm -hmm. make sure you fail forward. Yeah. And so really like the way he let me have the reins to go out and do it. And yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I'm blessed to be able to have that freedom. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Father Webb was the same way. Just like, we're going to figure this out together. And he, yeah. yeah, that's so funny to hear that. That was kind of the same because that was my experience. And I was like, this is wild. I remember texting Lindsay because Father Webb was like, here's the login. Um, he, he also tagged on, we're working on a hundred thousand dollar match right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done about 26,000 so far. So we had like 74,000 left. And I was just like, holy, and that seemed like so much money at the time. Right. Um, and I'm just like, how on earth are we supposed to get that much money? Um, and it's like, but I have a meeting I have to go to. So I will <laughs> be back later. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'm just like, well, I could just tell you right now that I have a million of them. But yeah, I wish I would have gotten this book a lot earlier. Um, oh my gosh. Was this one, The Spirituality of Fundraising? Yeah. And this That's is so cool. Reading. Yeah. At Petrus, they... Did they give this to us there? They might have. Um, but at Petrus, they um, were talking about this book. And like, by the sound of it, Spirituality of Fundraising, they're like, this is great for all development directors, but it's just great for everybody in general. Because right. like you were saying, the one thing I miss, missed early on, and I was lucky because the development director before me was amazing. And she left me yeah. this. I've never talked to her. I've never met her. But right. she left me this super detailed packet of like, what she did on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, what she did in January, February, March, April, it was like 18 wow. pages long. It was That's huge. Awesome. I actually used to have it hanging up over here. That's um, incredible. It was, yeah, I was so lucky because I was able to flip through and it says, okay, 
I'd go meet with Father Webb. It says we're supposed to do an end of year appeal. Like what, so what is that? What exactly is that? What does it look like? And then right. Father Webb was able to say, oh yeah, okay. So we'll send out a letter. And yeah. so I was like, okay, cool. And then I was able to use my creative mind to come up with something good. But, but yeah, this was the main thing I was missing though, was the spirituality mm -hmm. side of it. Like it was very transactional at first. Right. Like, it was just very like, we're trying to get this much money and um, we're trying to get do this match and right. just trying to figure out how to get it. And until I figured out like, reading this, I'm not even done with it yet, but I'm, I'm basically done with it. But just finding people of like, I like in that book, it says like, where people who have money meet people who need money, that's where God's mission is. Yeah, I'm like, 100%. that's so cool. Yeah, yeah because I we realize like fundraising is a form of ministry itself, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, inviting people to be a part of your organization, your ministry yeah. um, can help someone help that donor grow in their, their faith tremendously. Yeah. Um, Asking for people at first was, was kind of like, okay, like it can be kind of hard at times. Yeah. But then when you put that aside and realize like I'm asking them to be a part of this mission with me mm -hmm. and it's not just a transaction. This is an invitation for a lifelong evangelization opportunity. Yeah. Like that, that flipped the switch for me. Yeah. And made me much more comfortable going to people and realizing like this is a calling. This is a duty. This is a responsibility the Lord has blessed me with. Yeah. I'm going to go out and do it abundantly. Yeah, absolutely. And you probably had the the sales training before where they like have you. Uh, I can't remember where I had I did this, but I used to do it with my sales staff all the time at Orange Theory. But we we would uh, ask them like, are you are you into books or movies or whatever? And they're like, yeah, I love movies. All right. So for right. me, like, I love movies. Like, what are your favorite movies? Like Marvel. I just love Marvel. Um, right. Haven't seen the new Deadpool Wolverine yet, but we will soon. But um, but thinking about your favorite Marvel movie and being able to tell someone like why should someone go see it like okay right. so listen this is like where all the movies meet and they collide and it's just this epic thing and when you're explaining right. it it gets someone like i gotta go see this like you almost yeah. don't even have to ask them like are right. you gonna go see it will you go see it with me it's like they're asking you when can we go like when can we go right. see it because you you just made that sound so awesome and so i was like i just need to go to anything and everything um so i try to go as much as i can like uh sit in on theology and tea or go right. to faith and food and attend Sunday mass with them and talk to the focus missionaries and just fall in love with the ministry. And that's what happened. And it's right. made it so much easier. Um, let him know it's yeah. such a spiritual battle. Um, right. We're in like the time where everyone is possibly going to fall away from their faith. So we're kind right. of fighting that fight. Um, but at the same time, it's like all the beautiful stuff that happens, like becoming really passionate about that. And yeah, it makes it a lot easier right. to do the ask. But yeah, early on, I was like, it was wild. <laughs> I was just like kind of, going and meeting with people and luckily early on people are like oh by the way i, I need to send you guys a check I'll, I'll do that today so that should come right. in the next few days my and then it would come in and be like twenty five hundred dollars and i would just feel like on top of the world like no oh my doubt. gosh like what the heck like i oh. remember on one of my first visits it was actually my first year father Kerry had known this donor for a long time and had prepped this ask and we we're gonna ask twenty five thousand mm dollars -hmm. and the guy just said yes right then and there and it brought me to <laughs> tears because i was like man like that was that moving that that moving moment for me where I realized mm. like wow people believe in this ministry so much to give us a quarter of a hundred thousand dollars yeah and it really made that moment right there made me want to invest so deep into my faith to be mm. able to spread the gospel with these donors yeah you know I, of course I want everyone to be a major donor we all do but I want people mm -hmm. to get to heaven first and foremost yeah. yeah and the Lord will take care of the rest in between yeah. the gaps yeah absolutely yeah what um what are some ways like you kind of like I don't know if you've ever run across either you know, students or like people that like don't give or, or they don't, maybe they don't quite understand the, the quite the concept of like spirituality side of giving. Like, right. is that mainly, mainly just sharing the gospel or what do you normally? You know, I think, you know I think what I've noticed, like there's definitely some students that aren't giving and I know some of it just comes to, you know, you get to know that student and their personal mm -hmm. circumstance might be pinching pennies to a T. Mm -hmm. But what I try to do is, truly just try to go to them and get to know them to hear their story and hear their mm -hmm. journey <clears throat> and don't even talk so much about the things we're doing and all these programs and how they're benefiting mm -hmm. you and, and almost don't word bomb it. Yeah. But I just want to get to hear like, how's the Lord working in your life? Yeah. And, you know, flip gears from development director to almost being like that focused missionary at that moment mm -hmm. to get to hear their story yeah. and then yeah. pray for them and then continue to stay in touch with them and then continue to give them opportunities in subtle ways to invite mm -hmm. them to be a part of the mission, even if it's a smaller way and just yeah. slowly get them involved with like maybe a monthly gift or yeah. maybe it's a part of our appeal or asking us. And one of the things that's really helped me is 
we used to really work on students with large scale ask of like giving a talk after Sunday supper. Mm -hmm. And we've shifted our gears to going on personal visits with actual students, grabbing coffee with students, going to have lunch with students Mm -hmm. and making personal invitational ask with them. And they feel so much more valued. And we've gotten so many more yeses because we're sitting there and we're going to them and saying, listen, like Josh, I want you to prayerfully consider giving $20 a month to St. John. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. do that? And they're like, yeah, they're all over it. But yeah. when we ask them at a large scale event, we're, we've mm-hmm. noticed a lot of them are like, ah, you know, that, that's really cool, but I'm going to go on with my day. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. Easier to kind of push it off and be like, well, I'll, I'll think about it. Maybe I will. And then it's like, nah, they don't. So yeah. and then they get busy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was just curious because I know at that Petrus conference, they, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was like in the 90s, like, 78% of people did some sort of charitable giving. And now we're like into the 2024 and right. it's gone down to like 23% or something like that. And I was like, right. Oh wow. If that trend continues, our jobs are going to get real hard real fast. Right. And I don't know if maybe like people just lost that, not people, but like uh, the people that are trying to raise money have maybe mm-hmm. lost that the spirituality mm-hmm. side of it. And right. it is kind of more of a, just like the people with money feel like they're being hit up all the time. And then right. you give them money and it's like, all right, we'll see you next time we need money. Or if right. it's, or if it is like, a, like, I don't know the way the, the world's heading, the society setting, I don't know. But right. No, you make a good point. And I, you know, you know, as well as anyone out there, like, I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of donors that are getting hit up left and right. Yeah. But I think a lot of people like fundraisers get burnout so easily. And yeah. you've seen it to where the average tenor is end up like 18 months at an organization. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that, you know, as well, that you're drinking from so many water hoses and you're wearing so many hats that I think sometimes that spirituality, that zeal becomes mm-hmm. decayed yeah. and then you lose the fire and excitement for your mission. Yeah. And I tell people like as a fundraiser, you should jump out of bed, ready to go serve your ministry. Yeah. And you should be on fire, ready to go and sip your cup of coffee and go out and meet with people yeah. and spread the gospel. And if you don't have that, it makes it tremendously harder to go and because if you don't believe in your organization or if you don't believe in yourself, then how are you going to expect other people to want to be a part of your mission? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, yeah, the more there's going to be some natural nerves with, with fundraising and, and like yeah. inviting people into to the ministry. And this kind of goes for everybody. Almost like if someone's watching and they're like, well, I don't do fundraising. So, but it's like just inviting someone into the ministry at all, whether it's like yeah. to your Bible study or to discipleship or uh, inviting them to mass or whatever. Um, I feel like the more nerves you have, the more maybe you're either relying on your own talents or you right. are um, not as confident in the mission. Like maybe right. you're nervous that they're going to ask you questions about the ministry or about mass or about your Bible study that you won't be able to answer the question to. Right. Um, which is interesting because like, I, I feel like for me, I was like, you know, I don't know that answer, but I can tell you since I've been there at St. Philip Mary, this is what I've seen. And I'm like able to like, I That's don't know such that a good answer. answer. Yeah. And being able to use your, your, your testimony. And at the same right. time, not just, not just like deflecting their question, but like, right. I don't know that answer, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely get back to you and I'm going to figure that out. Right. But I can tell you since I've been there and then right. explaining it, but that, that was my biggest thing early on was asking people for money and it wasn't until I asked one donor and he said yes right away, which was kind of cool. Right. It was a monthly donor ask. It was like 25 bucks a month or 50 yeah. bucks a month or something like that. And they said yes. And I sent him a text and I was like, hey, man, I just wanted to say thank you again for uh, signing up to we call it Living Faith Society, uh, signing up in Living Faith Society and being a monthly donor. Right. Um, I know $50 a month may not seem that much. Right. But it, all those add up. It's, it's yeah. such a blessing and it gives us such stability sent him this nice text and he sent back by like, any time. And by the way, you're under asking. And I was wow. like, Whoa, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and so I, I sent him a joking text. I'm like, Oh, that's really great to know. Would you be interested in increasing your donation? <laughs> and just like, <laughs> well, we're just like joking around about, but yeah, it is funny. It's early on though. I was just super nervous because I didn't right. have the confidence in my ministry and maybe I was leaning on my right. own talents a little bit more than I should instead of leaning on like, God's going to use me as a tool for this part of his ministry. And, right. and I, and I have faith. I'm going to go into this ask. We have a big ask this week we're doing. And it's like, I'm going to go into this ask and I'm just going to trust God that whether this person says yes or no, God right. has a plan and will provide for this year. As long as we have faith and just continue to do the work, have faith and just right. continue to meet with people, continue to ask and yeah, it all work out. Yeah. Cause you know, you, you, or this is from my experience, like, you know, you've had some asks where we've 
been significant ask and maybe you know the conversation is kind of quiet and you maybe you're guessing like did i over ask did we under ask did we do mm -hmm. something wrong but then that person comes to you like a week later and says yeah we're going to commit and fulfill that you yeah. and so it's like man you you may like in those moments feel like gosh lord am i doing am i doing anything right here mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you hear the good news and there's been moments where you know we've we've had some tough meetings where you know, I wouldn't say the word grilled, but you know, you're getting nailed with all these questions that you just yeah. don't know. And you're yeah. doing your best to, you know, to answer them. And mm -hmm. you're like, man, I, I feel like that donor is frustrated at us. And yeah. all of a sudden that next week, they're like, Hey, you want to go play golf? And I'm yeah. like, oh, mm -hmm. then it, I guess everything's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah. It's, it's such a fun, a fun yeah. job, a fun calling, I guess. I don't even know if I'd call it a career or a job, but a fun yeah. calling. Yeah. And, uh, I'm so it's, glad to see you guys doing amazing things at TU as well yeah. because, you know, you and Father Porter are a great duo, and I consider you guys very similar to myself and Father Carey. Mm. And uh, yeah. it helps yeah. to have people to kind of, you know, bounce ideas off of and yeah. ask yeah. you, like, hey, what, what are y'all's thoughts on this deal? Or what about this appeal? Or, yeah. you know, what about Enlighten? You know, we're looking to do something similar, and I want to pick your brain on yeah. our fundraiser that we're going to do in the spring. Just yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know. And that's, that was the great thing about – my me getting hired day one thrown thrown in the office like good luck and then day two i met derek lissy and so mm -hmm. it was just like if you guys don't know is from the diocese of tulsa disease like again basically what we do we're the right hand man for father Carey and father porter he's the right hand man for bishop condola right and it was so great he was like let's get lunch tomorrow and we went and grabbed lunch and after that lunch which was like an hour and a half long like we just like basically talked the basics of fundraising right um he basically was like, we shouldn't go more than two months without getting lunch again. Let's just continue to check up. But then yeah. he also was like, reach out to you and then also reach out to Lori Giroux at Catholic Charities. So yeah, yeah. just like all of a sudden had, oh, and Doug Thomas at Bishop Kelly. Yeah. Um, and he's like, you're going to have this this group of fundraisers, group of de development directors that you're going to be able to bounce ideas off of. And um, and then it was also too, kind of like you're saying, like this is like ministry. Like you're, you look at your, the job as like, um, not like a salesperson, but like as like you're a missionary. And yeah. at that conference, at the Petrus conference, it was cool. Like they they were asking around during uh, during a break. They're like, "Who are some fundraising saints? Who who's your your uh, saint you go to for fundraising?" So obviously, got like Saint Catherine Drexel, who yeah. did amazing work in Tulsa um, for the Holy Family School. Um, but someone said John the Baptist, and the person was like, "That's cool. Explain." And he's like, well, it's cool because like, especially I'm on a college campus and, and the mission is on campus, but I'm the development director. And right. so what I'm doing is I'm being sent ahead, like go out into the community. Yeah. I'm being sent ahead to make the path straight. And by make the path straight, I'm being sent ahead to get the funds right. for the future. So it's like, we're, we're, we're laying the path and laying the groundwork for the future of the ministry and, and inviting people to join the ministry and basically letting them know this is where the mission is going. We'd love for you to join. Right. And then it's, it, I just thought that was such a cool analogy. I'm like, that is awesome. I got this kind of blank wall here and I'm, I want to like put like a whole bunch of saints over here. Yeah. And St. Catherine Drexel has always been one. I'm um, obviously St. Philip Neri, but now like St. John the Baptist, like I went right up there on that front Heck yeah. top row with him. Cause I was like, that's such a cool analogy. You know, you, you make a really good two point too, as especially with the Petrus conference. I did not go last year, but a year ago when I went or two years ago, I met so many amazing people doing the mm -hmm. same thing that you and I are doing. Yeah. And it's so cool to see so many people that are passionate about their ministry and passionate mm -hmm. about going out. And you realize like, you know, when you think, man, are all these organizations out there going to be able to be sufficient and thrive? Yeah. And the answer is yes. Like I, I believe there's an abundance of generosity out there. We mm -hmm. just have to go and give the right people the opportunity to be invited to that mission. Yeah. And yeah. You know, I've, it's it's interesting. I've met a, a guy two years ago who was a complete introvert. I mean, he did not mm -hmm. want to seem like he wanted the spotlight at all. And I had heard that this guy was just killing it at his organization yeah. and spreading the good news. And it's like, so I don't think there's like any one size fits all yeah. you know, fundraising mm -hmm. yeah. title either. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you see at the, that conference is, and, uh, and Andrew Robinson's going to be on this, the show soon too. Um, He's great. I, I think he'll, he'll, I've, I've texted him, but that man stays super busy, but, mm -hmm. um, that's what, yeah. What's cool about that conference is you see, um, even within the staff, like you have Andrew, who's like a little bit more quieter and reserved right. and he'll go up and talk to anybody. He's right. not, I mean, he, he may be consider himself an introvert. I've never asked, maybe consider himself an introvert but is very good, like one-on-one, -on -one, like people skills. Like I feel super comfortable talking to him, but you got people on his team, like his, his right-hand man, Tara, 
who's yeah. super outgoing and grabs that mic and works the stage at the yeah. thing. I'm just like, dude, you guys are, you guys are awesome. And then even within the, the team from there, I mean, like right. Dan, Dan is super outgoing and just straightforward and like everything. And then, and then Matt Bond is also another, he can kind of be both kind of outgoing, right. but also just really personable and great one-on-one. So yeah, there is no one size fits all. And it's definitely uh, when I tell people to consider the um, like the church for a career, um, I always, I always mention fundraising. So I was like, you right. never know. Like, you know, you may be excellent at it. I think that as long as you're faithful and passionate about the ministry, right. you could be extremely successful at it. You really can. And your organization can thrive. And yeah. one of the things Father Kerry and I are trying to do it here at St. John is we've got so many amazing students here. Mm -hmm. And there's different students that we think would be really well you know, not just at St. John as fundraisers, but also mm -hmm. if they want to go into this world of development, I think they yeah. could really do a great job. So yeah. there's a girl, we created an internship as a development intern for a student and oh, she is nice. doing incredible. And she does so many things like giving tours and we'll invite yeah. her to visits that are on site here at St. John just to be yeah. a part of and to understand just the conversation. But that also really cool. she's doing like newsletters and she's helping out with our appeals and yeah. doing some editing and, it's such a way to kind of find these people who you feel like the Lord can definitely steer towards fundraising. Yeah. And, you know, one, we'd love for them to stay at St. John, but I feel like they're going to go out and bear rich fruit anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of planting the seed like, hey, there's a career out there for you to do this and yeah. you can make such a difference in this world. Yeah, absolutely. And so, especially with, I feel like with where we're at, I mean, you got like, for if anyone was not from Tulsa listening, or you know, I guess it doesn't matter where you're from, but you're willing to relocate to Tulsa. Um, even within the Diocese of Tulsa, you got like Derek, who's been Bishop's right-hand man for a long time. Right. He's kind of like, his role looks like it's kind of merging into like, like, cause Adam, when Adam left, he kind of was like, kind of taking on a whole bunch of different roles and stuff. And then he's right. obviously got the podcast as well. So you, you know, for sure, like they're one day going to have some, some development type role, yes. something open up, whether it's just his assistant or something uh, there. And then you got someone like Doug Thomas, that's been a Bishop Kelly for a very long time. Right. Um, and he would retire like at, at some point and then that job uh, would be open as well. So yeah, it's such a rewarding uh, career and, and it's a career too, like for someone like us who are, Wife's so announced your wife's a stay home mom now, right? Yeah. Ever she, since she, she left St. John's. She's kind of part time in uh, contract yeah. work for St. John. No, oh, yeah, um, yeah. But she's not here every day by any means. Yeah, nice. So our, so our wives are even kind of the same. She's, my wife's a full full time stay at home mom, but she almost is acted as like a contractor for Christ the King. They're like, right. I was, like, she's I always volunteering. Yeah, she's always volunteering for things. She's right now, this past week, was going through Catechesis of the Good Shepherd training. And uh, right. she got that again this upcoming week. But, um, yeah, she's doing so much stuff for them. And so it's basically like stay at home mom's already a full-time job. But right. on top of that, she's like teaching classes at her homeschool co-op this upcoming school year. Like doing, right. she ran VBS for Christ the King. She's always volunteering to, to do a talk at the women's events and all that kind of stuff. It's just, it's wild. So, so. I see, I keep up with Lindsay on Facebook and she's an absolute rock star, man. Yeah, She's a wonderful she, mom. Yeah. Just a great Catholic, great person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Taylor has moved from full time to now almost, yeah, I would call it a full time stay at home with a little bit of some duties I have her help with here and there. Yeah. And it's allowed one her to be more more present as a mom. Yeah. And it allowed her to spend more quality time with our kids, mm -hmm. but also still kind of be involved at St. John in the partial ways, kind of like you said, with Lindsay being involved in different yeah. ministries. Yeah. Because um, I know that probably helps her get her cup full as well by pouring yeah. into others. Yeah. And absolutely and i also use her as well here just like it, even if it's just like almost like as like a uh an assistant in a way in a sense of like yeah. she edits all my stuff so i i write up an appeal and and design it on canva and then i send it to her and she's like right. i would move this this is a little muddied up so move this picture here and then also here's some edits for the the actual the wording so right I, i'm like not the grammar person so i always do it and you have like four or five people I need that. I'm like, all right, you guys I need you to, to edit this thing so that we are, uh, we're, uh, it, it looks good before it leaves. So, uh, yeah, so she's been great. It's, it's always great to just kind of finding that way that, that you can give, like, how can yeah. you give to the kingdom of God? How can you give to your parish or your local right. charities or whatever? And it's not always, maybe you are financially super tight. Um, we've only been able to afford to do like 50 bucks a month, a hundred bucks a month to our, our parish yeah. or St. Philip Mary for a while, which is great. 
But one right. thing we've always been able to do is is give our time. Like we've been right. able to just volunteer and help anyway. There's no parish, no college ministry, no no right. uh, Catholic charities, no anything that doesn't need more volunteers. Right. Like no one's going to say, "Yeah, we're we're actually full on volunteers right now." So no. yeah, no, that would need more hands. You could call any nonprofit organization, any charity, and they're going to need volunteers. Yeah, right now, you know, pick up the mm -hmm. phone. And yeah. utilizing that opportunity, it, it's so fulfilling when you volunteer to something as well. And yeah. even if you're serving food to somebody or, you know, if you're going downtown the streets of Tulsa and helping out the homeless people, just doing what you can, Hour of Mercy, there's such yeah. a way that you, you don't realize you're helping them, but you're also helping yourself in so many ways you didn't know you needed. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I've kind of tried to flip my thinking from being very transactional. Hey, I'm trying to finish this right. 100K match. Like, can you help? Like, whatever to like, let's meet, like, I would love to know about you and your charitable giving goals and your, because right. it might be so you meet with someone. It's like, I've just been really, I've had so much time on my hands. Uh, right. Money's tight. I'm not necessarily extremely talented or anything, but I've got so much time and I, I'm like yeah. be super hands-on. And it's so cool because we've got people that like, we got one lady that like served Tuesday lunch every single Tuesday with every group that came because we'd have a yeah. different group different parish or Catholic charities or the diocese, someone coming to serve lunch every Tuesday. And even though it's a different group every day, every right. Tuesday, she's there every single time. So it's right. like, like I, I have the time. Um, and so I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be a financial supporter. I, I, I don't necessarily have like some wild talent that is very useful to you guys, or maybe she does and we just haven't figured it out, but right. she's like, I have a ton of time and I would love to just give you time. And I'm yeah. like, that is awesome. And the more we've, we've seen that, the more we've been able to, like connect people with the ministry in different ways and, and connect them uh, in ways that they can help the mission run. And then, then that way they're right. still con connected to the mission instead of just like, yeah, like you're just another transaction. It's like, right. Hey, Oh, you don't have like enough like money to give. Like, oh, right. I don't really have time for, like, I, I've got to finish oh, yeah. this hundred K match. It's like, no, it's like, how can you, how can you, yeah. how, how are you willing to help the ministry? Yeah, like not everybody needs to be a major donor, a monthly giver, yeah. or even someone to support your pill, but they can come out and help you water the flowers in front of St. Philip Neri, or they yeah. can help you serve mass, or they can help you serve student lunch, or yeah. they can help you come up and, and send out mailer appeals upstairs yeah. and just spend time with you, yeah. make phone calls, doing a phone-a-thon. Yeah. There's so many ways for people to get involved. And mm -hmm. like, I, I think it's so important to encourage volunteers to support your organization, especially if someone has it in their heart that they want to help. Yeah. Um, who are we to tell them, no, we don't have a place for you. Yeah. You know, absolutely. That's what people are like. I've gotten it a few times at the end of last semester. It's like, do you guys have any like spots that you need help with? Or do you have, like any volunteers? We just recently started up an alumni association. The alumni association is even right. like, Hey, could we come up and just do like a, a closet clean out or a cleanup right. like before school year starts? Let's just get the place organized and ready to go. I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. That sounds super great. Um, yeah, just yeah. What, coming up creative ways just to be able to give. Because um, the more you give back, like God's going, you're going to, what is so uh, say, you're going to receive tenfold back. Um, you will. And it's one of those things you, you may give $10,000 to an organization. And God's not telling you he's going to give you that 10 K back plus like times 10. You're not going to get a hundred K back. You might, but right. it's not necessarily in that way, but, it, but in a way of like, you're just gonna be blessed with just so many graces. And, and me and Lindsay have had both. We've had times where we continue to support folks, missionaries. When I was making, right. she was a stay at home mom and I was making $10 an hour plus commission at a nutrition club. And we were making it work. Like we're just right. like, that's all as our income. It was so terrible, but we we're supporting seven focus missionaries at $50 a month. And so yeah. $350 a month, which was just a crazy a right. percentage amount um, towards yeah. our, uh, of our budget. And we had times where like our electric bill came and I was like, oh man, I opened it and it was like half of what it normally is. Right. And, and I, with right. no, no explanation, like I have no clue why it was. Um, it was crazy. And then we did have times where it was around Christmas time. I was getting really stressed and honestly a little like just kind of depressed of just like, man, I wish I made enough money to even like be able to get my wife anything right and we'd have uh but we continue to give we just try to we always made that's a a deal breaker so we're not we're, we would never stop giving in some sort so right. we just kept doing it and we had some random regular customer that come in and she gave us a christmas card and like hey merry christmas just want to give you guys this and and she left before we opened it and we opened it and she had just 
like felt she's like i just really wanted to bless you guys this christmas season she like left 300 dollars in the in the yeah. thing it's like man you don't even realize how much that helps us and it's it's just wild how like we just stay committed to giving and we weren't expecting financial returns but but we knew that god was going to give us graces whether that was patience or whether that was just comfort like he was going to provide still and we've had so many different ways like so many different testimonies of ways he's just continued to provide which has been awesome and that's so wonderful to hear because just when you think like you're stretched thin the lord mm -hmm. always finds a way to to just come through for you yeah and i think like you said it best when you focus on giving like when mm -hmm. you find ways you can serve others and give to others it always comes full circle maybe yeah. in a different way it may not always mm -hmm. be monetarily but yeah. the lord always gives you exactly what you need when yeah. you need it yeah and that's just special man and yeah this the mission the more you're here the more you're at saint philip mary the more i'm at saint john the more i'm enticed to to want to support other places and to support more focused missionaries yeah just support other organizations other people that are doing great things yeah um i think the world needs more people that have that yeah. abundance and radical generosity mindset yeah and you know you guys yeah. are instilling it in your students every single mm -hmm. day and that's something we try to do is encourage students to uh, look at tithing as as giving back to something that you believe in, not just looking at as this is just something that oh, I'm going to give 20 bucks a month, um, but really by diving into that and really being mm -hmm. passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And I love and I love the part of the ministry. And this is also like, a, I think, a form of trusting God, too, is like I'll be working on a donor or something or, or like maybe we have a monthly donor that's been giving for a while. It's like 200 bucks a month. It's like one of our right. larger ones. And like this person's awesome. And then their student graduates and they've got another student like that's going like, we'll just say they're going to OSU or they're going somewhere. And they're like, Hey, like we just wanted to call, like, we're so sorry to do this. But since he graduated, we have another student about to attend this university and we're going to move our donation over there. And it's always yeah. like, so uh, satisfying to right. completely comfort those people. and like, Oh, that's right. amazing. Well, we can definitely stop your donation, right? Like whenever yeah. you need, and you should move it over there. You yeah, should move that over there and support where they're going to be. Um, and it's always like a, definitely another way of like giving, like you're, you're not going to try to talk that donor into it's like, well, what if we just lowered it? I mean, you could, uh, but like what, right. like just encouraging them, mm -hmm. like, yeah, you definitely should support where, where they're going. Um, and take your focus to that per that student that just left and, and, uh, letting your seniors know as they're leaving, like you guys continue right. to be part of the mission by, by giving back your time, your talent or your treasure. Um, so that, people can continue to make the same stories that you guys made here. And so right. we always, always try to convey to our, our seniors at our senior lunch each year. So let them know, like you guys did amazing things here. You guys grew tremendously. Uh, you, right. We let them share their testimonies and then we invite them to be a part of the future stories, like those future testimonies. So, right. Cause unfortunately we can't do what we, what well, the mission can't go forward. Father Porter, and Father Kerry can't do what they do right. unless there's money there. Right. Um, so it is a necessity. It's part of it. Money's always part of it, but it definitely is a mission. It's part, part right. of the mission. We had to go and s straighten the path and, and yeah, God will do the rest. Yeah. The, so. You know, I think what's also cool is like this, there's this balance of like taking principles or, mm -hmm. you know, like for instance, like making 10 calls a day or going on 15 to mm -hmm. 20 visits a month, like establishing these guidelines you want to meet, but also yeah. then the spirituality aspect of like when you're in that meeting, like allow the Lord to work and don't become so like focused on like, I need this $20,000 gift or I need this $50,000 yeah. gift because then you're not allowing the Lord to work. You become like that insurance agent that's trying to, you know, get the sale or you're yeah. trying to sell, you know, you don't ever want to come across as, as a huge card salesman in this, you know, industry or organization because mm -hmm. it's so much more meaningful. Like yeah. that it's so much more impactful. Yeah. And, and it, this job is just, it's brought me to tears at days when you realize, man, like people's generosity, just mm -hmm. like, it's amazing to see. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's cool that like, it's the kind of stuff that, uh, yeah, you get, you get money. It's great. But you get and like, we got invited to an FC Tulsa game and we got to go yeah. s sit in the suite with one of the donors. And it was just like such a cool experience to then when we were there, it was just like, uh, there was no money talk. There was no, we didn't right. talk about St. Philip Neri. We literally like, she was asking Lindsay about her, the, the co-op stuff that they're doing, the homeschool co-op. And we were asking her about, uh, this camp she used to run for her grandchildren. Right. And it was just it was such a cool environment. And so, yeah, you really do grow these relationships with these donors that 
and that so they they don't feel like they're just another transaction it's like right. oh, another appeals in the mail like they need more money <laughs> it's right. like we do need more money but we want you to be a part of this not right. not uh just the bank part no. well, one of the coolest stories i'll share real quick was there was a a donor of ours who I have a really cool relationship with mm -hmm. and his son was kind of in between wanting to choose Catholicism and get confirmed or was he going to wait and just kind of figure that out once he got to college. Mm -hmm. And so he came to OSU, went on a tour and we came, became really close and he's 17, 18 years old at the time. And so we stayed in touch. I was praying for him and visiting with him. And then all of a sudden he wanted me to be his godfather when he was going to get confirmed. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. And so I was like, heck yeah, I'd love to. Well, it, long story short, I was supposed to be in Tulsa when he was going to get confirmed, and it wasn't going to work out for me to be there on that day. So we talked to Bishop Condola and Father Kerry, and he was actually allowed to get confirmed here at St. John with our college students. Oh, and nice. so it was probably one of the coolest moments in the development world where one of our donors entrusted me enough to be a godfather to his son and mm -hmm. for him to get confirmed here at St. John where I get to work and where he's a donor to. Yeah. And now we're really close and he's at uh, a different school, Ave Maria in Florida and yeah. has grown so much in his faith. And we do weekly, bi-weekly Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. And you don't realize like these relationships last a lifetime. Yeah, this, absolutely. This is someone who um, he mentioned I'd be in his wedding. And you don't realize like, you know, it's it's not all monetary. It's more relationship mm -hmm. and then allow the, the Lord to to work however he wants to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's some of my favorite parts too, is that's, it's been my favorite part of just life in general. It's just always relationships. And boys, I had a nutrition club beforehand and, and it was awesome where people would walk in and they'd just be regulars. And it was just super cool to like, yeah, just to know them so well. Um, and, uh, yeah, to, to be invited to their kids' birthday parties or to, to be sent a Christmas card or whatever yeah. it is. Like it's, it's super cool. It's cool when you're at the outside of your, your office has like all the Christmas cards from the, either former students or yeah. current donors. And yeah, it's, it's so fun. It's yeah, such like, a great, you know, same for you. Like when you got donors or myself as well, like when they're sending you, you know, baby gifts, when you're having a new baby or, yeah. you know, they're mm -hmm. sending you all these different things and you're like, man, I need to be the one sending you stuff and you guys are yeah. doing it for me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you realize people care about you as well. Yeah. They, they, mm -hmm. they deeply love you. Yeah. And, uh, Man, absolutely. It's, it's, it's been a fun episode, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we still uh, got to wrap up and do the uh, um, the Saint draft, but oh, um, yeah. but yeah. But before we uh, jump into that, do you guys have any any plugs, anything going on at OSU, or uh, obviously the new the new school year's coming up? But so one plug is pray for our students. Everyone, yeah. they're fixing to show up, and school starts August nineteenth, and so keep our students in prayer. Keep yeah. Father Carey in prayer. And, and keep our staff in prayer because we've had an amazing year this last year and we want to continue to build on what's yeah. already been established with Bible study increases, Sunday supper participation increasing. And so the plug is just pray for our students, staff and volunteers yeah. here at St. John. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Same, same here. Same film there. I mean, yeah, we had three student led Bible studies at the beginning of last year and ended this school year with 14 student led Bible studies. And it's just right, like man. wild what like, what God and the students are doing. And so right. it's cool. And like you were saying earlier on in the episode, this is something I forgot to mention too, is like, it is so cool. Being a Christ the King, we got these older guys. Right. And I'm on the axe retreat with them. And they're like, man, I just love where you're at in your faith. I wish I was as faithful as you are when I was your age. And I'm right. always thinking to myself, like, you should see the college students. Like, <laughs> I wish I was as faithful yeah. as they are when they're at this, their age. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's so cool. And it's, yeah, it's moving to see them. I One of my favorite things is seeing like the people who are like the, the college students that are like liturgical assistants. So they're like serving yeah. mass. Like it's just super cool to think like, man, a college student, I, you couldn't hardly get me to church. Right. And this person's like serving mass, like, like part of the, the celebration, which is just super cool to see. You know? So yeah, continue to pray for those students and we'll keep you guys updated. Um, there's always newsletters. You guys can join the emails, email chains and stuff. So you guys can keep up with, with what's going on in the, uh, the, the diocese around uh, or the college ministry around the diocese of Tulsa. Um, Cause yeah, it's blowing up right now. It's, it's crazy. I think what well, we had like 40, 40 plus students confirmed and, and brought into the Catholic church this past Easter between the two of us. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's wild. I think we got eight, eight already signed up for next year. It's, it's wild. The stuff that's happening right now. It's super cool. So, um, 
Awesome. Well, we'll jump into the same draft and then we'll wrap this thing up. So uh, for anyone that hasn't uh, seen it before, the Saint draft is uh, the most amazing game to ever hit the internet. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But it is. Uh, it is. We're just going to draft our top five Saints. I'm a big sports guy and I know Brett is too. So it's just like any draft. Like You draft your number one uh, number one pick and we'll go back and forth and we'll do five rounds and then we'll do a plus one. We'll always do a six man. That's kind of like a your your either – there's no rules to this. So it literally changes throughout, but I always tell people <laughs> that the sixth man is typically like a blessed or a venerable, someone who's like on, on their way to sainthood. Um, Mary's always off the table. Um, right. Bishop Condola didn't listen to that, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, um, well, yeah, the, the guest always goes first. And our goal is just to, if these saints were alive today, um, they would save the world. And so I'm always kind of like strat, like strategizing, like, how do I want to pick my saints and stuff? But once once the saints pick, they're off the table. So I'll let you go first, and then I'll kind yeah. of go. I do it each week, so I'm always trying to get creative and mix it up. And and Man, I, yeah, I got to go with my guy Saint Thomas Beckett. So, okay, Archbishop of Canterbury, England, in the early 1100s, was a uh, martyr and sacrificed his life for the faith. And I think that just the courage that is needed in this world to speak the truth mm-hmm. and to really own our faith. Um, yeah. as much necessary and almost be willing to die for our faith, you know, is something that's yeah. important. So that's what St. Thomas Beckett did. And my wife and I named our first son after him, Beckett. Nice. So that, that scene is very important to me. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Then I don't think he's been picked before. We've, we've done so many episodes now. I may, maybe he has, but I don't think he has. Now we did an episode with Father Elkin and his saint. I hadn't heard of any of his saints. <laughs> that's I like, awesome. I, sh- I should have did that. Yeah, it's just like he was naming them all, and I'm like, okay, Father, you're going to have to explain who these people are. I've never heard of these people. Um, all right, so I would probably go, um, man, I'd probably go uh, like uh, my leadership and make sure I have someone really great that everyone loved. And so St. John Paul II. JB good, too. Great Pope. Um, I always like say it, and when as soon as I say it, I'm like, that's my, my he'd be like, great leadership, all stuff. I'm like, not necessarily saying anything bad about Pope right. Francis. So maybe he right, would right. come back as as just John Paul II, not Pope John Paul II. But he'd be great. Either way, he'd be a great leader on the team. He'd be my LeBron James. He, he's a baller for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Um, my my second go to. He was actually on my list that I wrote down. So that was a nice grab. Yeah. Um, Saint Genevieve, who's the patron saint okay. of Paris, and I thought of her because of all the stuff that that has been going on, controversy, whatever you want to call it, with the Olympics. Yeah. And so I, I think praying for her intercession right now for our world, yeah. um, you know, not just to Paris, France, but just our whole country as well. Yeah. And, you know, her courage as well. I would almost say like her her leadership, kind of like you said, to mm. be able to go out and spread the gospel and have no fear in doing it. Yeah, absolutely. So, That's awesome. I um, believe it is Gerald. He's our assistant director of formation, Gerald. Um his second youngest, I think her name's Genevieve. So, oh. so we got it, Genevieve. I would go that same. Uh, I'll, I'll just try to match like what you're picking, but like a, a different person that would help with that same thing. So, so for thinking of what the world needs right yeah. now is they need help with their mental health. It's like mental health is just getting out of control. I mean, 100%. social media itself is just giving so much anxiety and pride and and envy and jealousy. And so I'd go Saint Dymphna. Nice. I don't know much about her aside from her being the patron saint of mental health. Yeah. Um, my my wife's best friend from college, not even Catholic, but she loves Saint Dymphna. Just always, she has a medal that hangs in her car because yeah. um, she struggles like I think it's anxiety and struggles with some some mental health stuff. Um, but yeah, I think right now, like in the world, that's the one of the biggest things. All the gender dysphoria with all the yeah. yeah stuff. I mean, that's kind of the same thing happening in Paris. But that and just like the fact that like. Uh, I did pro life week last week here on the podcast. And last week we like, uh, I found a video and it was just like, uh, what's the guy's name? Mm, he's got, he's like, I think he used to be a, a talk, not a talk show, but like a, a broadcast or whatever. But anyway, he yeah. said, um, I'll concede with you that it's a life. It's like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just okay with ending it. And it's like, wow. Oh gosh, like, wow, that's terrible. Like that's, wow. so it's like, yeah, mental health. We need, we need help with that. Yeah, you make it. That's that's so neat, especially on college campuses as well. Yeah, you're, you're seeing all the struggles right now. That's a great yeah. pick. We have, we have a contraception vending machine at TU. It's wild. Yeah, the pro life mm-hmm. table will sometimes set up a table right in front of it. 
but it's just like so sad yeah it's wild it's like what in the world it's like and i think if i remember right it's free i think it's like you just walk them and hit the button and plan b pill hit the button there's condoms and it's just like that is just pray pray and intercede for these this world yeah absolutely so speaking of mother mary i'm going with a mary but it's not our mother mary it's saint mary of egypt oh okay so I, I actually, what's unique, did not know anything about this saint until Father Curry actually chose her to be in the artwork in our church. Yeah. And so she was a prostitute and a beggar from age 12 to 17 years later and mm. then converted to Christianity after that and lived her life as a nun and desolation um, and just was a holy person. And basically, you know, you see chastity being a problem on college campus, remaining pure. And yeah. some of the temptations, sexual temptations. So I think that's a an important thing to really combat right now yeah. is the sexual sin. And so St. Mary of Egypt help us combat sexual sin, especially on college campuses yeah. and in our whole world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, man, who and I got? This is where I like, get to the bottom, and it's like the opposite problem you would have with like – I saw someone do a ranking of the Team USA NBA basketball players, oh, man. and they're like ranking them from 1 to 10 of like who's who's the best versus the worst player on the team. And uh, towards the end of it, you kind of get to the point like, dang, I don't know who I'd put. But it's like the opposite problem for this, the Saint draft. It's like you only have three more spots, and you're like, dang, there's too many good ones. Um, <laughs> there really is. Yeah. I would probably go someone who – this one always is, it's on my water bottle. It's someone that, it's a, it, if I had to pick one, but there's no rules and they're always mentioned together. Whoa. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Drop my water bottle. Uh, they're feast days together, but uh, when you get the family life back in order, so St. Louis and Zelly Martin. That's I, such yeah, a good pick. Got this sticker. It's so cool. Um, not only can they help with uh, just with, with family life and stuff, but then they're also great. They're, I mean, their entire, they, they just had such a good faith as the center of their family. Right. That like all I think of their, their kids ended up entering like religious life, which was awesome. And then they're also really good at like listening to God's will because their right. will was wanting to enter a convent. And when he went, Louis wanted to be a priest and God right. was like, Nope, not going to happen. <laughs> so uh, the so Martins. Amazing. Yeah, so my wife and I named Taylor named our miscarriage baby after Zelly Martin. Oh, and nice. So that's what we named her. Um, man, great pick. That was on my list here as well. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with I love Saint Teresa Lisieux. Okay. And you know I love one of her quotes: "We all can't do big things, but we can do little things in little ways." And I think Mother Teresa of Calcutta actually used that quote as well. But yeah, I think it's so important to just realize like we are all called to be saints, and we yeah. all aren't gonna have to go and do you know, these are major things. Sometimes it's the small things that actually yeah. leap, reap the most fruit and become yeah. the biggest things. Yeah. And I think in the world we live in, like there's all these different small ways that we can mm-hmm. serve someone each and every day. Yeah. Like it can be in a little, it could be, you know, introducing yourself to someone, making mm-hmm. someone, calling someone by their name, holding the door open for someone. Yeah. And these are just little ways I think we can spread the gospel. And yeah. that's really what we need in today's society. Yeah, absolutely. I think I saw something one time that said the, the top two things that you can say to someone to lighten up their day. And the, the number two is I love you. And, right. and which is crazy because it's like, what, well, what's, what's the number one thing you can say to someone to lighten up their day? It's like, you can call them by their name. Yes. And I was like, Whoa, like, that's crazy. I like, I guess that makes sense. Cause I love you would be more intimate between a right. per, like a, a, a you and your spouse, but like you can call everybody by their name. And like, that's just not something people do anymore. I mean, people don't even like, I think, I think some, like I had a friend call me yesterday just to see like, what's up? Like, what are you up to? Like, how's the, how's the, the lawn? Like, he's letting us borrow a lawnmower. So how's it, how's it running? How's it, you know, there's no agenda right. to the call. It's like, awesome. Well, Hey, we're going to have to get together soon. Um, uh, yeah. Let me know. I'll be out of town this week and we'll get, we'll get together. And there was no agenda to the call. And I was right. like, that was super cool. Like, I don't remember yeah, the last time someone just called to be like, what's up, man. That's what <laughs> it's about, man. And yeah. then, like he could have been doing anything else at that time and wanted to call you and chat with you and vice yeah. versa. You chat with him. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, that's special. Yeah, man. That was awesome. Our daughter is named after St. Teresa of Lisieux. Um, boy named her kind of, It's you, you wouldn't know unless you knew, but like obviously her known as the little flower and she, right. her miracles, like roses would appear. Um, and so that's what her middle name is, right. Adeline Rose. Um, yeah. So number four, I'll go ahead because I know I'm going to take him anyway. I can usually save him for the last pick because nobody – Nobody's going to pick him because most people don't know anything about him. I was actually in a donor meeting and got called out and I was like, oh crap, I don't know much about him. But it's my boy, St. Philip Neri. 
oh, guys yeah. just the uh the epitome of the little way of evangelization such a great like he a he gave up a business to then go live with the poor and serve and i was like man that's awesome like it sounds weird but i was like man i like that we kind of like went the same route like i gave up my business to serve the church and work for the church but I love that he's got the best title. It's like the patron saint of joy. I just thought right. that was super cool. And they're like, he was really handsome and really joyful and just jolly all the time. And which is cool. I actually think of Father Webb when I think of him. But right. uh, but St. Phil and Mary is just the greatest. Like he just lived among the poor and would just go ask people if they're ready to serve Jesus after building a relationship with him. And then they, when they say, yes, I am, they, he would take them straight and pray together and then plug them in, get them to a hospital, get them to an orphanage, get them to a school and they plug them in and, I th he ended up doing oratories and had all sorts of religious uh, groups that were established under his name. And uh, they were established under the, the motto Cor ad Cor Loquitur, um, which I'm no, I don't speak Latin fluently, but if that's how you say it, um, but it's hard to speak to heart. And I was just like, that's great. Kind of exactly what we've been talking mm -hmm. about this entire episode. It's just like, right. even with, with fundraising, it's just like, this is just heart speaking to heart. Yeah, hundred percent. I know St. Yeah. Philip Neri has been very important in you and your life. Not, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's not a coincidence that you're working at St. Philip Neri. Yeah. You know, I think that yeah, absolutely. he's definitely interceding in your life right now. Yeah, absolutely. All yeah, right. Man. Fifth pick. And then we got our sixth man. That's a good one there, man. I, there's so many good ones. I'm going to go with Maximilian Colby. He oh. probably has been chosen before. Yeah, he um, has. He's a, he's a common one. I actually have a prayer card over there of him. We got these cool prayer cards they're like you'll love these they look like retro baseball cards that's it oh, so, Fulton Sheen, Fulton that's Sheen. and then you flip it back. it's got the biography and everything on the back it's, it's cool i love it man we had some of those made for the saints in our church on the wall and oh nice give them out to donors yeah max colby everyone probably knows a lot about him just the sacrifice he made to you know step out of line and give up his life and become a martyr uh, but yeah. all the things being a franciscan priest and aiding the Jews during the Nazi war and World War II, just everything he did. I think we need to learn to uh, make sacrifices for those around us yeah. and not be afraid to carry that cross. When we're yeah. To. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's, he's great. The Maximilian Colby is always, always uh, typically actually towards the top. So you kind of got a steal there. Um, he's yeah. Going, I found the grad. He's a, he's a stud. Yeah. Uh, well, it's funny. We, uh, we had two cats and we are late. We procrastinated and didn't get them fixed in time and they ended up having kittens. And so we named them all after, after saints. The mom and dad are, are not for saints, but the, the, the kittens <laughs> we did. And so we had Bosco who we actually ended up giving away to some, to some friends. Um, but we kept name. the other two and it's Colby and Avila. And I was oh, like, man. that's perfect. And so, so Maximilian Colby and then, uh, and Avila. And I, I will take St. Teresa of Avila as the last one because she is just such a great – she's always – I always call her, St. Therese, and St. Catherine of Siena, like, faith warriors. Like, they're just, like, such great prayer warriors, faith warriors, um, and just people I think would be great to evangelize right. the current Catholic Church. They'd be great right. to – like, yeah, we need to evangelize, and there's people out there that are doing these crazy satanic stuff and all this stuff. They right. definitely need that. Um, but we also need someone just to – help uh, help current catholics grow deeper yeah. in their faith it's like that's all the reason the catholic church could ever look like it's failing is because the the body is weak like the head's right. always going to be great nothing will ever prevail against the church but right but it will prevail against the body the people in the body so um 100%. yeah so she'd be great for that man all right six man yeah six man blessed venerable I've, I've had one where someone was like, what if we did uh, Mary apparitions? Uh, so it literally, there's no, no rules to it, but. Man, I have a, so I got a question before I make this pick Has Fulton Sheen been probably one of the, the most popular. So because most of my guests are Oklahomans, uh, blessed Stanley Rother is definitely Rother. the most popular. Um, Venerable Sheen's one of them. Um, and I keep, I keep his in this book, in the Spiritual Life Foundation book, because it's my bookmark, um, but also my one and only godson. His name's Fulton. Um, but uh, he's been up there. Uh, Blessed Stanley Rother. I mean, we got two of them that are about to move into the starting five with Carlos Acutis and um, Pierre yeah, no Giorgio Frassati. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and also Blessed Stanley Rother's day yesterday, feast yeah. day. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to roll with Blessed Stanley Rother. Being in Oki, yeah. his feast day was yesterday. Uh, yeah. Intercede for intercede for all of us. Yeah. And 
such an, an amazing guy. I'm sure most people have heard his story, but what he did to make the sacrifices to go back to his people, to his to his flock, um, yeah. and was martyred because of that. I think yeah. back to that, you know, kind of falls in that leadership category. Yeah. Um, we as men, not just clergy, not just priests, but men have to be masculine and be leaders, to make sacrifices yeah. for our families. And he's yeah. an example of that, you know, mm -hmm. in everything he did. Yeah, absolutely. I love that uh, the story they said, like when they showed up and he, they found him dead, but they also found his sleeves were rolled up and his knuckles were bloody. So it was like, right. they said like, this guy didn't give up without a fight. Like he, he fought, fought people. Uh, I was like, this is, that's so cool. Like, so it's Josh, cool, like you'll like this too. Like mm -hmm. what, fun fact, he, so Southeastern, my alma mater for my undergrad mm -hmm. posted a deal the other day where he was an alumni from Southeastern Oklahoma State. In Durant, oh yeah. Which I had no idea. So, yeah, I I, uh, I think that he's definitely at work in the, in the world we live yeah. in, the we live in. Yeah, and, absolutely. And I'm so excited for that guy to be a, a saint. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it should happen any any minute, any any day now. So, yeah. mine mine will be the one that's going to move into the t starting five soon. But it's uh, Carlos Acutis. Nice. And I just love that. I just read this thing recently of uh, well, first of all, Gerald, who's our assistant for director of formation. He was back in London for um, uh, a month or so visiting his family. Because that's where he's right. from. And he runs into this lady as they're looking at uh, some, I can't remember what it is, but they're running into this lady. And she's like, do you want to go in? I can show you guys around. And apparently she ended up telling him like, yeah, you know, so blessed Carlos Acutis, like his mom came and like prayed for me because I was really sick. But right. I'm actually one of the miracles that happened. Wow. You know, I was like, whoa, like that would be insane. Like that'd be wow. crazy. But uh but yeah, blessed Carlos Acutis. Um, it was super cool. I was reading this story about um, how saints visited his mom uh, while she was mourning and she was really sad. And and what's cool is like this is all like recent. I think he died in what 2006 or something yeah. like that. I would have been a sophomore in high school. Yeah. Uh, we I need to look up and see when he was born. I forget because we may be around about the same same age. Um, but I know he died super young. Um, yeah. But the saints would visit him, and and there were there were a couple saints I hadn't heard of. But then. Uh, the two two that I remember are St. Francis of Assisi mm -hmm. um, of visiting her and saying, um, don't be sad. Your son is one of the highest of high saints in heaven and a whole generation of saints will come after him. And then later on, she felt a little better. But then later, uh, Carlos Acutis himself visited his mom in a dream and said, uh, mom, I'm so I'm so filled with joy. Like I am I am in heaven and. And they say that I'm one of the highest of high saints um, and that a whole generation of saints will come after me. And I was like, wow. that is the most encouraging thing when they're like, that's our goal is to become saints know. and get to heaven. Like nothing's more encouraging than a saint himself appearing to his mom and saying like, like a whole generation of saints is coming after me. Yeah. I'm like, that's super cool. Yeah. yeah that's inspiring right there. Those yeah. words are real comforting for sure. Yeah. Super cool. Well, Awesome. Well, you guys, like always, you can comment below and say which team you think's best, but obviously two teams of Saints, you can't go wrong any direction. But um, thanks again for being on the show. Man, I, thank, I enjoyed thank you it. for having me, Josh. I, I tell, tell everyone that like people like you and like my friend Branson who was on the show, my wife, Lindsay, I'm like, I tell them afterwards, I'm like, I, just, I understand how Matt Frad could do three-hour episodes. Like, it just makes sense. Like, it definitely could just keep going and talking about, even if it was just this topic, you could definitely right. do like a whole nother hour. But uh, yeah. But yeah, everybody else, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe because, um, you know, like and subscribe, commenting, everything. The interaction is what makes YouTube say the AI or whatever, say we need to push this out to more people because apparently it's cool. And so that's a way of uh, evangelizing. You can push this this channel around and, and it'll spread Jesus around YouTube because that's our motto here is YouTube needs more Jesus. Right. Um, next week we have, uh, have you heard of the uh, Just a Guy in the Pew? Have you heard of that podcast? I'm not. Fill me in. It's cool. So there's a guy named John. Um, he's got a great testimony of overcoming addiction. Um, uh, wow. While he was married and had kids, oh, he was hiding. He was that good at, at like being an active member of society, but still under this addiction. Um, right. he, started, he, he has this amazing testimony. He was a guest speaker at That Man Is You this past semester. He's got a podcast called Just a Guy in the Pew. Like that's just how he viewed him, viewed himself and how he still does view himself. So I'm, I'm just a guy in the pew, but if just a guy in the pew can do this, can overcome addiction, if just a guy in the pew can evangelize and do this, so can you. And it's just an amazing, awesome story, but he's been doing great stuff. He was out at the Eucharistic Congress speaking to people. He did a live wow. podcast there. 
uh, he will be on this podcast next week, Man, which is awesome. is one of those times where you're just like, what, like, what, what's happening? Um, so, uh, yeah, so keep praying for all the guests that are that are on the show or that are going to be on the show because we've got some great people that are considering being on the show. Uh, Father Gregory Pine will be here in November, nice. um, so we're going to snag him. Amber Rose, a religious hippie, if you guys don't know her on social media, great for college kids. Um, she, she'll be on the show soon, too. Um, so we're just super blessed and excited. God's working through the podcast, and I'm glad he's using me as a tool. So subscribe, like, Brett, thanks. And we'll, we'll be in touch soon, um, talk about some more development stuff. Everyone else, have a great week, and God bless.